In this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the Bonhomme Richard Fire Investigation, Part 2, Analysis, Commentary, and Fireboats. Yes, fireboats. All right, well, that covers the timeline of the fire from the initial smoke to the explosion on board. What I want to do now is talk about the four main areas that they identified and in, in a little bit of an analysis and critique of this. So when you look at the executive uh, summary of this report, along with the information that's provided in chapter three on opinions, uh, they basically say there are four focus areas that drove the final outcome. One, material condition. Throughout the maintenance period, the material condition of the ship was significantly degraded to include heat detection capability, communication equipment, shipboard firefighting systems, miscellaneous gear, clutter, and combustible material accumulation. To illustrate the extent of degradation on the morning of fire, 87% of the ship's fire stations remained in inactive equipment maintenance status. Training and readiness. The training readiness of ship's force was marked by a pattern of failed drills, minimal crew participation, and absence of basic knowledge of firefighting in an industrial environment and unfamiliarity on how to integrate supporting civilian firefighters. To illustrate this point, the crew had failed to meet the time standard for applying firefighting agent on the seat of fire on 14, 14 consecutive occasions heading up to 12 July, 2020. They were zero for 14. It's not like, well, they did, you know, it was a hundred times they did four. No, zero for 14. They had not been able to get the wet stuff on the red stuff at all. Three, shore establishment support. The integration support expected by the shore establishment did not adhere to required standards. Southwest Regional Maintenance Center did not meet their requirements associated with fire safety, and in doing so, failed to communicate risk to leadership while facilitating unmitigated deviations from technical directives. Navy Base San Diego failed to ensure its civilian firefighters were familiar with Navy vessels on the installation, verify they were trained to respond to shipboard fire or effectively practice how to support ship's force and simultaneously integrate responding mutual aid assets. Oversight. Ineffective oversight by the cognizant commanders across various organizations permitted their subordinates to take unmitigated risk in fire preparedness. A significant source of this problem was an absence of codification of the roles and responsibilities expected by each organization in their oversight execution. All right. Let's look at each of these in a little bit of detail. So one, material condition. And this comes right out of uh, uh, section one of chapter three, pages uh, 255, starts on 254 actually. So one of the first things is obviously the, 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 the material of this condition of the vessel contributed to the fire. Uh, roving shipboard watches are essential when you're in a shipyard period because a lot of your fire detection equipment is offline. And the lower V hold where a lot of material was stowed during this maintenance period was not being observed. Uh, it was unclear what type of fire this was. Was this, was this a type A or class A fire? Heavy materials, you know, wood and stuff. Was it a class B oil fire? Was it a, you know, liquid fire? Was it a class D electrical fire? Nobody ever knows about this. And one of the things that they note here in the report, ultimately, poor readiness and material condition rendered any fire response challenging. And again, one of the things that happened is because of the condition of the ship, the fire spread was happened. You could not isolate. You couldn't shut down ventilation. You couldn't secure hatches. You can do it. But again, there should have been plans for that. If, if you have cables running through a hatch and you can't secure the hatch, well, then have provisions in place. Where are accidents? You know, how do you det detach things? It's better to cut a cable than it is to risk the loss of a vessel. Now, obviously, you don't want to cut power cables, but you need to have those provisions in place. This, the material condition of Bonham Richard was in disorder. It goes into this issue, despite the ship's fire stations being in a degraded condition, 187 of 216 fire stations, 87.5% being in an inactive equipment maintenance. All right, I am going to hammer the damage control teams for this. You have a damage control office. You have these huge, massive plates 
that show you the integrity of the vessel. It shows you every deck where every firefighting system is. Your team should be responsible for going through this vessel and checking on all 216 of those stations. And you should have a red mark through everyone that's not working. So that if you do have a fire that hits the lower V deck, you know you have to string hose from here to here. And you have hose prepositioned on the flight deck or in key areas of the vessel. So your damage control teams can go get the hose and rig it, you, you, I, I mean, they just did not, they just hoped there wasn't going to be a fire. That seems to be the plan here. Let's hope nothing goes wrong and therefore everything should be right. I know I'm Monday night quarterbacking this, but again, you lost a vessel, a $1.5 billion vessel in the port of San Diego. And this crew granted, you know, and I was, this is the other thing I hear all the time. Well, this vessel had been at sea with a full crew it never would have happened. Really, are you sure? Because a lot of the issues they're talking about here could have happened at sea too. And let me be clear, if you get hit by a missile, you're going to lose firefighting capability. You're going to lose systems. You're going to have to rig hose over long distances. You're going to lose part of your crew. You could lose your primary damage control teams. This is the, the argument that this wouldn't happen at sea is bull. I'm sorry, it just is. This could happen anywhere. And the fact that they weren't prepped for this is a huge problem. Go on here. The AFFF system on Bonham Richard was partially available on 12 July 2020. How is it nobody hits these buttons? I mean, seriously, flood the lower V deck. Is somebody afraid to hit the buttons? I, I mean, why did nobody flood this deck? Uh, and, and again, it, it's one thing if the system wasn't working, but we still don't even know if the system was not working. The report is not clear about it. They actually come in and say, well, we think it was working on the port side, but maybe not the starboard side, but you would still have flooded the deck. You could have contained the fire to a certain extent, but that is never done in this fire. It goes on here, and this is probably one of the most damaging. This is on 257 in paragraph eight. It says this, because the maintenance was not properly performed, various push buttons were left in an inoperable or unknown state to include those in the damage control central and the conflagration stations in lower V. Due to the significant damage caused by the fire, coupled by the falsified maintenance work by the ship's force, it is difficult to determine the pre precise status of the available AFFF in relation to the areas closest to the fire. Falsified maintenance work? That is criminal right there. That's, that's criminality right there. Again, only person court-martialed so far is an E1 for potential arson, which by the way, the investigation determined there wasn't enough evidence, yet the commanding officers for this area are deciding to push ahead with it, even though there was insufficient evidence to do it. Going on here, DC Central was in a degraded state of readiness, preventing the engine duty officer from establishing a centralized response in the early stages of the fire. Yeah, they know the 1MC wasn't working. Can I be clear about this damage control too? There's something, another thing I read in the report that just amazes me. When the ship was abandoned, they took the DC plates, the large charts deck to deck, out of the DC office and brought them ashore, they disappeared, disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to them. They had to get the damage control plates from the boxer, a sister ship, so that they could fight the fire. Uh, how, 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 I mean, seriously, how, how does that happen? How does, how do you take the plates out of the vessel and then you lose them? I, I mean, I mean, I don't understand that. I re I'm really at a loss to understand that. I, I, I just don't. I, I just don't understand what happened there. How does that happen? Because those things are essential. If they had been updated and they get grant, they weren't. So, so it doesn't really matter. But I, I just don't understand that at all. Goes on here. Ship's force relied on, on communication by phone rather than radios and other installed systems because critical communication systems were degraded or inoperable. And this is probably one of the most damning ones here. The Bonham Richard CO, Captain Gregory Th uh, Thorman, lacked awareness of these degradations and poor communication practices. Thorman had been XO of this vessel. He had operated this vessel at sea. So, I mean, the fact that he knows this vessel inside and out and the fact that he was unaware, lacked awareness of the degradation and poor communication practices. Again, he arrives on scene and he's the one who defers to Fed Fire. He basically washed his hand of this fire and turned it over to Fed Fire. And how this CO is still in the Navy, I don't know. Because he oversaw the decommissioning of the ship. 
the Navy will fire captains on ships for everything, for sexual harassment issues, for failure, lack of confidence. They fired the COs, uh, the CO of the, of the Connecticut, a, a nuclear submarine for running into an uncharted sea mound. How, how do you fire somebody for hitting an uncharted sea mound? It's uncharted. It's by definition something you can't expect. Fire on a ship? Kind of expect that. And this guy is still in the Navy? Come on. Come on. Number and placement of Bonham Richard's brows. A stern brow would have enabled firefighting efforts aboard the ship to continue from the hangar and well deck. I'm going to come back to that when I talk about fireboats. Fine, finally, this, the ship had a limited number of self-contained breathing bottles and insufficient capacity to recharge them. I, again, how, I'm sorry, how does Fed Fire and San Diego Fire Department, by the way, and I haven't gotten into this yet because I'm going to talk about this in a minute. How do they not have recharging capabilities? By the way, you have the Russell and Fitzgerald right alongside on the pier there. They could charge air bottles. How, 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 how does nobody have a, a recharging capability, a compressor to put air into it? I guarantee you San Diego Fire does. I guarantee you a lot of the mutual aid came on board did. How do you not have a, a, a wheeled station? And if you don't, load the bottles up and go to a ship and charge them and bring them back. I, I, I mean, this is ridiculous that you're running out of air bottles. All right, next part here, training and readiness. At least 10 minutes passed from the time of the fire was reported to the quarter deck before bells were rung alerting the crew. I am not sure, by the way, they ever sounded alarms. It's not clear in the report that alarms were ever officially sounded. It goes on here, the absence of an effective duty section contributed to the lack of speed and coordination. There was no effective in-port emergency team available on the morning of the fire. Of 150 members in the duty section, they did not have a designated in-port emergency team to don gear and fight a fire. I, I, I mean, I, how do you set up a watch section without a firefighting element? I, I just, I don't understand it. It's the watch section. How do you not have that prepared? And if you don't have that prepared, then there has to be a contingency for what you're going to do. I, I just don't understand this. This is in, on page 259. This is just crazy here. A significant number of sailors reported the hangar were not prepared to join host teams because they thought Navy working uni uniforms could not be worn under firefighting ensembles. <sighs> what have you guys trained on? What, what did you wear when you went to firefighting school? What, I'm seriously. And, and if you're worried about your camis catching fire, take them off. Strip to your underwear and put on firefighting gear. I, I, I mean, the fact that this is still an issue in the Navy is, is I, I, again, every time I read this report, there's something else I find that is just mind boggling. I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about this. Ship's force, initial firefighting effort, lacked a coherent command and control structure. No shit. I mean, seriously. I, I, I mean, there was, there was no absolute command structure here. I was, it was, it was terrible. This is again, another one of these repeated attempts to access lower V without sufficient PPE protective personal equipment and firefighting agent hindered response agents. All right, listen, if you know, you don't have fire hoses on board, you have a shitload of CO2 extinguishers then standing by so that you can run down there and try to knock it out with CO2. I, I mean, you have something standing by. They, they, they don't have any of this standing by at all. Uh, this is, again, one of these damning statements on page 260. Ships force failed to adhere to basic firefighting principles. And then on, in, in section 21, this statement is made, which is just amazing. Statements by the duty fire marshal indicate they were able to successfully maneuver into lower V without FFE, that's, that's their firefighting ensembles, PPE, more than 20 minutes after smoke was first detected by the ship's force. So they could still get in there 20 minutes later without air protection, without firefighting gear, both individuals stated they advanced to a point in the lower V where they could have accessed fire station four, TAC 53, TAC two before turning back. Both individuals also stated they were able to observe the glow of the fire, which indicates properly dressed hose teams could have accessed the space and applied agent in the same time period. Again, go back to that moment in the fire early on. If they had been able to put a team together, had they been able to get hose down there, had they been able to get water on it, they could have knocked this fire out. And instead, it got away from them. The ship's force failure to apply water to the deck in upper V allowed radiant heat transfer to ignite materials in the, number, uh, in the upper V. Ship's force was unable to set boundaries. We talked about this already. The movement of the damage control repair stations added to confusion. They kept shifting which damage control repair station they were using. 
Location of the fire was not properly communicated. When Fed Fire arrived on scene, the ship's force did not confirm lower V as the location of the fire. Nobody said this is the, the base of the fire. And then this, no failure of ship's force to use available hoses or apply agents allowed the fire to spread. No member of Bonham Richard's crew and no civilian firefighter used the ship's fire stations throughout the firefighting effort. Uh, they then critique him on their decision to evacuate the ship and secure power. They also critique him on the use of the AFFF and failure to use AFFF. And basically, their training and readiness was absolutely abysmal. I, I mean, I, I just don't know what more to say about that. Let's go talk about the shore establishment support. So Bonham Rashad's crew did not properly alert Fed Fire of the incident. That's true. They never called Shoreside. They never alerted them to it. They got that information through the Harbor Defense Network. Uh, it actually is here. Uh, Commander, Naval Region Southwest dispatcher who overheard observations of smoke from the anti-terrorism tactical watch officer while monitoring the Harbor Defense Net is the one who dispatched him. The ship's force had no plan or active firefighting effort when Fed Fire and San Diego Fire arrived. Each attempted to establish their own plan. Fed Fire did not maintain DC plates or detailed pre-incident platform specific plans. I, again, there's only set amount of classes of vessels. There's only number of vessels that are at San Diego. How do you not have plans for all the vessels, just generic plans for all the vessels? This is Fed Fire. Their job is to supplement the ship's force in case of a ship fire. Yeah, they go to fire alarms and buildings. They're there to assist in other ways. But a, a ship fire, and you don't have plans for them. You don't have the general layout. You haven't worked and done a shoreside drill. Has there ever been a shoreside drill? I don't know. It doesn't say in this report, but I, it's just unbelievable. This one, number 36 on 263. Without a fire main system on Pier 2, Fed Fire connected to a potable water riser on Pier 2, which was inadequate to support firefighting because of limited pressure and volume. You're in, oh my God. You're in San Diego Bay. You're surrounded by water and you don't have water to fight a fire. Let me be clear about something. You don't need pipes and hydrants going down a pier. You need a couple of things. Number one, you just need a pipe going down into the water. And then you can draw suction from that. And, and to do that, you bring a portable pump with you. You bring a big ass pump on a trailer and you bring it to the pier and you hook it in, you suck water out of the bay and you feed your engines on the pier. That's what you do. If not, there are two big massive pumps on the pier already, Russell and Fitzgerald. Why have we ever practiced taking water from the ships and pumping them to the engines on the pier to provide that water to them? That was never done. By the way, that's what a friggin' fireboat does for you. That's why you have a fireboat to provide water to the pier and provide water to the ship, not to spray water like you're seeing down there. They don't understand what a fireboat's for. But that's never done. If you do not have enough water to fight this fire, this fire is going to get away from you. If you don't have sufficient water, that's what you see happening. There's no, again, I can't talk about the fact that there's no water on this pier. It's just crazy to me. Uh, number 37, ship's force should have directed Fed Fire to enter the ship via the side port uh, to save time, energy, air, and resources to efficiently and effectively respond to the Casualty, descending from the hangar forced Fed Fire to descend directly into the rising heat and smoke emanating from the lower V. Neither group had an established plan for affecting coordination and integration. You don't fight a fire by attacking it from above. You attack it from the side or below. They were literally having the chimney effect. They were coming down from the hangar deck to the upper V to the lower V. They were descending into the heat. That's not the way you want to do it. I mean, you just don't. All that heat is coming up, piling up through space it's, it's radiating upward and you're going through that that's crazy i mean not to mention the fact that you have an immediate access on the side port which is on the upper v yet no one tells them that nobody tells them that it's just amazing 38 the mechanical incompatibility of fed fire and ships forces hose further complicated integration efforts all right again i'm gonna lose what's left of my hair here in this video all right when you go to a structure fire, which has a standpipe system, a, a, a skyscraper, a building of some type, when we go to a commercial building, we bring what's called high-rise packs, hoses pre-packed, throw them on our shoulders about 100 feet, bring them with us, and then we tie into the standpipe system on it. You don't use fixed 
hoses. You don't do that anymore because those hoses aren't inspected. You don't just do it. Basically what you'll see in buildings are big standpipes with, with valves and nozzles. Outside, the fire engine ties into the fire department connection and pumps into the building, supplementing the sprinkler system. What fed fire should have done was use the shipboard firefighting system, bring their own hoses that they know that they have trusted and they certified with them so that they can tie in. That was never done because if it had been done, they would have known that their threads don't match. And let me be clear about something. Buddy on my fire department was a federal firefighter at New London. That's the big Navy base. He fought the fire. He went to Portsmouth to go fight the fire on the Miami. I mentioned this to him and he says, what, where were their bag of, of, of adapters? How do they not know this? Guys fighting fires on submarines know this. Why do they not know this in San Diego? Seriously, I, I mean, I don't know how they don't have, I don't know how this is not done. And then later on in the report, it does say that Fed Fire always intended to fight the fire with their own equipment. Does that mean they were going to bring large diameter hoses, jack them throughout the ship? Or were they going to use their hoses to tie into the fire main system on board the ship? Because either way, they were unprepared for both, in my opinion, because they didn't have water on the pier. They didn't have sufficient water. They were problems with laying that hose into the ship. And then if they were going to use the ship's firefighting gear, then obviously they've never done this before because they would have found out their threads don't match. The female version of their hoses don't match the male threads on the connectors in the ship, which is just, again, amazing to me how do you not friggin' know that and how do you not have a, just a huge bag full of adapters to use for that i mean they should have that i, I mean I, I again and if you don't if you don't want to carry them on your engines put them in a truck and bring them with you when you get dispatched to a fire you know it's, it could be the same truck by the way that has the huge friggin' ass pump on the back that you can use to provide water to your to your uh fire engine oh i'm sorry it gets me all worked up this this report 39, ship's force effectively ceased any firefighting attempts and efforts once fed fire arrived. How do you surrender your vessel? I mean, seriously, you're the command duty officer. You're the CEO of this vessel. Why do you give this fire over to fed fire? It is, you, you know the ship. You know the ship. Even when I go with my pre-plans to a building, I don't know the interior layout. It's, it's a schematic. It, 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 I still don't know the layout as well as somebody who's on the ship. What you should have been doing with fed fire, and they did it to a certain extent, was supplement fed fire with experienced damage control men from the Bonham Richard to direct them. But what you don't do is turn your fire scene over to that. That'd be like me having a fire in my district and then a mutual aid company comes in. I turn it over to them. Hey, okay, you, you fight this fire. I'm going to go back to the truck. That, you don't do that. You, you have abrogated your right and your role and responsibility. And by the way, still in command or still in the Navy, as far as I know, is the CEO of this ship. Again, hasn't been relieved. Stayed on until the vessel was decommissioned. Fed fire failed to employ Bonham Richard's firefighting systems was inconsistent with the intent of the 8010 manual. So they mentioned the 8010 manual throughout here. This is the manual that came out after the USS Miami fire, a ship, a nuclear submarine that caught fire at Portsmouth, arson. And it was supposed to fix all these issues that they encountered with the Miami fire. I'm not sure these guys ever cracked it because it seems like they did nothing at all with it. And finally, here on 41, during the initial three hours of the casualty response, Bonham Richard, Fight Fire, and San Diego Fire did not effectively execute an integrated response. Goes on here, there was no integration between Ships Force and San Diego Fire Department, poor integration between Fed Fire and San Diego Fire. Fed Fire Chief, concerned with accountability issues, directed San Diego Fire Department to depart the hangar deck because he, she couldn't get a, an accountability issue. She had them leave from the scene. At approximately the same time, San Diego members located the fire via the side point ramp, shifted their efforts to that location. Uh, it goes on here, but the repair division, LPO, and other ship's force representatives failed to escort San Diego Fire Department into the ship despite repeated requests. Why the hell wasn't Bonham Richard's crew helping this? I mean, what's the answer to that one? I mean, I mean why would you not help in this? And then again, on-scene integration coordination between San Diego and Fed was limited due to radio communication challenges and lack of mutual aid training. I went to a fire years ago where our department to the north of us in a separate county was on a different radio system. We had incompatible radios. What did we do? I sat there at the command post for that town's fire department 
It was a major fire at a warehouse. And when he wanted to communicate, the chief wanted to communicate with our guys, I relayed it on my radio. I had one of his radios right here. I had my radio. When they called, I relayed. That was it. That's all I did. It's not exciting. It was boring as crap, but that's what I did. And that's what you do if you have incompatible radios. You, you do that, or you give the department a radio to have for that. I just, that would have came up in a mutual aid drill in a second, by the way. The lack of coordination between firefighting organizations, Monharm Richard's crew delayed, <coughs> delayed putting agent on the fire. The arrival of Fed Fire essentially stopped the efforts of the ship's force in the hangar. San Diego's side point entry interfered with Fed Fire's efforts from the hangar. Yeah, you had two incompatible teams fighting each other, one coming down the ramp, one coming from the side port, and they were basically in each other's way. They weren't coordinated effort. They, they could have been coordinated, but that would require communications and discussion and everybody knowing what the frick is going on in this fire. Ah, sorry. On page 266, San Diego's attack on radiant fires in Upper V at about 9.50, 100 minutes after smoke detection, was the first and only time direct agent was deployed on any fire aboard Bonham Richard prior to the 1050 explosion. Attempts by San Diego Fire Department and a failure to account for two ship force members led to a rescue attempt by San Diego and ship's force personnel. This is uh, an issue that was complicated by a formal uh, method to account for personnel on board. Minutes before the major explosion at 1050, San Diego identified changing conditions in smoke volume, velocity, density, and color, which indicated a pending explosion. San Diego and Fed Fire both ordered an evacuation, which I showed you earlier. The last firefighters exited the ship minutes before the large explosion at 1050. Timely action by civilian firefighting organizations saved lives, prevented serious injuries. That explosion, by the way, convinced the Fitzgerald and the, and the Russell to get off the pier. And that's where those sea tractor tugs were, were pulling Fitzgerald and Russell off the pier. After 1050, fire grew in intensity. Okay, I, there's something I have not related yet, and this is the next one here. This is number 48 on 266. San Diego's departure in the afternoon on 12 July was aligned with San Diego Fire Department's department risk priorities and should not have been expect, unexpected. Fed Fire and Shift Force disappointment over Fed Fire's departure reflected, or I mean, it should be over San Diego's departure, reflected an insufficient understanding of San Diego Fire Department priorities and capabilities and lack of sufficient mutual aid training. After the explosion, the fire grew in intensity, but the explosion had happened. There was a decision to start sending crews back on board and fight the fire. San Diego Fire Department announced that, listen, we're not risking crew members to save an abandoned structure which is true in buildings. Ships are different, uh, I would argue, because again, this crew abandoned because of the heavy smoke on board, but they had never worked with San Diego Fire on this contingency, obviously. Yet what happens is the Fed Fire Chief tells the San Diego Fire Department, you can go. She released the most trained firefighters on the pier shortly after the explosion in San Diego Fire, Metro Fire, National Fire, all the major fire departments that were there were released along with all their gear, their ladder trucks that could basically get over the Bonham Richard so you wouldn't need those ridiculous helicopters dropping water on the ship, which I never had seen in a fire like that before. That's, that was crazy. Let me be clear. If you had aerials on the pier, you could have hit everything. Those, those water things were, were dumping, those buckets underneath those helicopters. But she released them. And I say she because it's a female fire chief for, for Fed Fire, that I know. Uh, and this issue is unbelievable, unbelievable, because one of the things San Diego Fire Department has is those recharging stations for air bottles they could do. They, they again, I, I just, it's unfathomable that you would at least, yeah, you have more firefighters coming from the ships, but again, not as well trained as San Diego, as National City, as these Metro Fire Departments are. You're losing key elements here. Until you can bring reinforcements from other federal fire departments, which they eventually do from other federal uh, bases in California and as far as Arizona, I think, uh, they let them go. The fact that there was no coordination here just goes to show how bad this fire was. All right, last one, oversight. Again, I go right to the report. A lack of commonly understood command and control structure led to a vacuum of understanding of who was in charge response efforts, creating a leadership vacuum. But Harm Richard, CO, Thornmutton, 
or Thornton, I can only say his name, and the uh, Bay CEO, Captain Mark uh, Niwadami, had never heard of or trained to OPNAV instruction 3440.18 prior to the fire. Likewise, the command and control structure outlined in the 1810 manual, which directs use of in-hole ICP, which is uh, 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 command, and off-hole ICP was not effectively utilized leaving support entities with a lack of clarity on roles, responsibilities. The willingness and readiness of numerous rescue and assistant teams responding from across the waterfront to support Bonham Richard's firefighting efforts are commendable, although Bonham Richard failed to effectively integrate and employ these teams. Again, right at the fire call, Russell and Fitzgerald sent over a seven and a nine person team. They were kitted out, ready to go. They were good to go, never used, as far as I know, at least not in the report. They are never effectively used. And you had, again, a huge firefighting team. You had Fed Fire, you had San Diego Fire, you had a lot of firefighters show up on this to handle a fire in a huge open area. But again, because of lack of material condition, training and support, it never works. It just never works. Uh, it goes on here, in absence of clear leadership by the base, by Southwest Regional Command, by the ship, Commander Naval Support uh, uh, CNSP ordered Expeditionary Strike Group 3 to manage the overall incident response. You need a freaking admiral to command a fire. What the, I, seriously, seriously, why is an admiral commanding a fire? No idea this. I, I, again, you know, when we have fires, we, we will escalate in command of a structure. If I arrive on my first in engine as a captain, I may pass command over to an assistant chief or up to a chief. In larger municipal areas, they'll go to battalion chiefs or deputy chiefs. But here you're passing it over, not because of coordination. It's because how is the CO not in command of this? The CO is ultimately in command of this vessel. He abrogated his role as command of this vessel, yet maintained being CO until they towed this thing out of San Diego to be scrapped in Brownsville, Texas. And the Navy released, by the way, a document on that talking about how good the vessel had been for damage control lessons. If only it had been good for a damage control lesson on 12 July. Goes on here, uh, MBSD and SWRMC's failure to coordinate training for a major shipboard fire resulted in unclear lines of responsibility during the incident response. All of this could have happened on a ship that wasn't coming out of repair availability too, let me be clear. This shore establishment support, this oversight, all of this would have hampered this ship had this ship just been prepared next day to leave on a deployment or had just come back from a deployment. I don't think it really matters if it's coming out of this. This is terrible. Uh, let's keep going here. This is, is, is really an amazing one for me. Uh, this report louds NAVC. NAVC 00C on her own initiative took an early action in response to the Bunnaharm Richard fire that resulted in the activation of important assets that were effectively employed later in the firefighting effort. And it, it goes on here because it talks about this and uh, it, it discusses the introduction that a U.S. fire pump uh, U.S. fire pump positively contributed to the overall firefighting effort, providing resources and techniques not readily available to the Navy, including high capacity pumps, drones, and thermal imaging capability. We'll come back to that in a second. Last little part here before we get to that. Uh, the tactic employed to surround and drown the fire as Bonham Richard's crew and Fed Fire attempted to regain access to the ship following the initial large explosion was likely the best course of action available. <coughs> However, it failed to slow or prevent the unabated spread of the fire by 20, 20 hundred on 12 J July, no personnel on the ship. Flames were openly venting from the structure. The warping of the flight deck was leading concerns over the structural integrity of the hangar. Goes on here, execution of the extended integrated response between Bonham Richard and Fed Fire continued to reflect a lack of understanding of basic principles for command and control for a major casualty. I, again, I, I just don't know what to say about this in many ways. I'm, I'm really floored by the overall response of this fire. Every time I read this and look at it, I'm shocked. Uh, I, and I find something new in it every time. It, it's just a cacophony of errors that just continue to snowball out of control to have a major capital ship of the U.S. Navy burn in the harbor of San Diego for four and a half days. 
And the fact that the only person, the only person that's been prosecuted, charged right now is an E1 is, is it, it's, it's comical. It really is. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it, it, again, I don't mean to lose my voice here on this, but I don't know what to say. I really don't. I, I'm really at a loss for this. All right. Last point I want to make is this fire vote issue. And then I will leave you with this rant of a video. All right, this takes us back to where we started this long video at the very beginning is this letter on April 8th from Carlos del Toro, the Secretary of the Navy to Adam Smith, the chairman of the, of the House Committee on Armed Services. And this was in response to an inquiry about uh, whether or not basically fireboat, uh, a fireboat response plan. So it attaches the Navy's brief outlining the Navy's position regarding fireboats and the response plan at major US Navy bases. And again, this plan, I would argue, is, is not a plan at all. So this was put together by Navy Installations Command in March. It's a whopping eight pages long, as you see here. And to tell you the truth, <coughs> it's this page and that page. So it's not even a page and a half. But right here in the executive summary, following the Bonham Richard incident where fire, firefighting equipment, Navy tugboats. Now, first of all, they're not Navy tugboats that were used. So again, come back to here. We've got the San Diego Harbor Police boats that were used. And then the sea tractors. These are from Edison Shoest. These are contracted to the Navy, but they're not Navy fireboats. Uh, were employed. The Navy has reinforced the importance of waterborne and airborne firefighting capability. They love the helicopters. They love the helicopters and has ensured both are incorporated in the Navy installation emergency response plan. The Navy assesses that existing waterborne firefighting capability and capacity is sufficient and there is no requirement for dedicated fireboats to support shipboard firefighting requirements. Come over here to the conclusion. The Navy assesses that the lack of dedicated fireboats did not have an appreciable effect on the Bonham Richard incident or loss of the ship. Really? So if you had a fireboat, you would have lost a ship anyway? I don't know about that. And in fact, waterborne firefighting capability readily available on Navy tugboats, again, not Navy tugboats, was brought to bear on this incident has been formally accepted into the Navy installation emergency response plan. First off, you didn't get a fireboat there, at least the San Diego Harbor Police, until just before the explosion. You don't even get the sea tractors there until after noon and they were begging i have talked to the crews during this incident on board the sea tractors they begged begged the navy to let them come and help but they were refused to come in and if you go to the report here the navy talks specifically about this this is page 48 of the Jagman report, a whopping four paragraphs on waterborne firefighting effort, efforts. At approximately 10.05, San Diego Harbor Police boats arrived, began spraying water on the starboard side of Bonham Richard. By 10.45, three police boats were engaged in a waterborne firefighting effort. By 11.10, San Diego Port Authority water, water tugs were requested by the Navy base. At 1,200, additional tugs arrived to continue cooling Bonham Richard's starboard side and provide pump support for peer-based firefighting efforts. At 1230, the ICP, in coordination with the Bonham Richard CO and Navy Region Southwest Deputy Commander, requested all available tugboats from Los Angeles and San Diego to support hull cooling. So first off, they weren't readily available. The explosion takes place at 1050, 1050. And the only ones that are on scene are the 36-foot police boats that are there. Uh, Continues down here on arrival, various tugs provided continuous water cooling on the starboard side. By 20, 1547, four tugboats were providing cooling alongside. That's this image you get right here of the big show West uh, tractor tugs in operation right there. Goes on, Fed Fire was tasked by Fed Fire with locating additional water sources to support firefighting efforts. He recognized the tugs could pump seawater from San Diego Bay in, into fire engines located in the pier, therefore supplying additional firefighting water. The method was employed on tug arrival at approximately 1430 and continued over the next several days. I talked to the crew members on Sea Tractor number nine. They had to rig water from their tug. They went where the Russell and Fitzgerald was on the other side of the pier. They came in, rigged a manifold so that they could pump to the engines on the pier. They, again... The fact that that hadn't been practiced before, trained, now the crew on board, the tugs were great. They, they, they figured this out. They were able to get this system up and running, and they did this for days until a permanent pump was brought in. 
But that should have been a factor from the very friggin' beginning. Why is it a tug is not sent to the pier immediately with this manifold on standby so that they can pump directly to engines if you don't have friggin' water on the pier? If you know you don't have water on the pier, why is it these tugs aren't brought in sooner? Again, you could have gotten it off the Russell and the Fitzgerald there too, because they have huge pumps on board too. But the tugs were there for this. It goes on here, supervisor of salvage and diving, NAVC OC, representatives arranged for two contracted firefighting tugs to deploy from Long Beach. By mid-morning on 13 July, these tugs arrived at Navy Base San Diego and commenced hull cooling. That relieved the sea tractors to go do other things. Aerial observation com uh, confirmed these firefighting progress, and over the next several days, these tugs were directed to more precise locations for cooling conex boxes on the flight deck. All right. Understand, even the sea tractor tugs, these big bad tugs right here are not fireboats. If you want a fireboat, this is a fireboat. This is the LA fireboat. This fireboat in 2003 was bought by Los Angeles. This thing cost $11 million. It pumps a 50,000 gallons, excuse me, 50,000 gallons of water per minute. 50,000 gallons per minute. This is the fireboat in New York City, the 343. Uh, uh, the 343 is named for the 343 firefighters that died on September 11th. She can pump 20,000 gallons per minute up to 50,000 gallons per minute. During the attack on 9-11, fireboats were used not to put the fire out on Pierside, but they, when, when the towers collapsed in New York, they hooked up large diameter hoses from fire engines to these fire pumps to the, on the fire tugs, on the fire boats, to provide water to suppress the fire. And they pumped four days at a time. That's the issue here. They, you know, one of the things they talk about is, well, we use the tug, you know, the sea tractor tugs here to pump ashore to the fire engines. That's what you want a fire boat for. That's exactly what you want the fire boat for, to do that. But more importantly than all of this, if you had a fireboat that could pump 20 to 50,000 gallons of water, understand what you can do with that type of fireboat. And that's the key that is missed by this report. This is our diagram for the vessel. Again, fire starts right here, lower V deck. Here's the upper V deck. Here's a landing craft well. If you had a fireboat, you could have done a couple of things. Number one, you could have brought it right in here and parked it on the starboard quarter of the vessel. The stern ramp was down. You could have hooked into the ship's fire main system. When power went out on the vessel and the fire mains went out, you could charge the fire mains through the fire tug. 50,000 gallons per minute can charge the fire mains on any vessel. You would have been able to use the fire systems on board this ship to fight the fire after you lost power on board. All right, wait a minute, Sal. Uh, 187 out of 216 fire systems were off. You're exactly right. You know what else you could have done? You could have laid large diameter hose, that big five inch hose that you saw laid down the pier there from the interior of the vessel through the landing well deck, which was dry. It wasn't submerged. The landing deck was wet, was dry. Through the, the well deck up onto the upper V, hook it into a manifold that distributes hoses, bring your shore connection, your, your high-rise packs on your shoulder up there, hook into those manifolds, turn them on and fight the fire right here from the well deck up to the upper V and then down. Believe me, if you're in the, if you look at the damage to this vessel, everything above the fire, except for the well deck was gone. But you could have sat here in the well deck below the heat, below the fire, no smoke. You could have ran hose in here, multiple large diameter hoses off that fire pump, off that fire boat, here, two manifolds, and you could have gone down the ramps through the side compartments to, to hit it, and you could have provided, you could have hooked up monitors. You could, we have something called the blitz nozzle, sprays 500 gallons of minute, makes a curtain of water up there. You could have just rained water down here like a portable sprinkler and set them up down there and just flood the lower V deck, as opposed to what eventually happens in running out. The problem is you couldn't do that. Why? Because number one, you had harbor police boats show up, which don't have that capability. The sea tractors showed up, but you wouldn't let them show up initially. They had to beg you to come in. And when they eventually do come in, it's after the explosion. It's too late to do that at that point. They hadn't practiced hooking up to shore 
engines, which they should have been able to do. There should be a manifold, again, in the back of a truck that's hooked to a pump that they can bring to a fire so that they can hook to the sea tractors and feed the engines. You could have been popping aerials from the pier side here all along here, two, three, four aerials from your mutual aid, from San Diego fire, from National City fire, and raining water down on that flight deck to cool it so that you prevent that fire explosion from happening since you can't vent it, you can't cut a hole in the flight deck. You can be cooling it down during that entire time because water on the flight deck is just gonna run off the flight deck. You could have been doing it. There's a lot that could have been done. But the idea that this report sits there and says, listen, we use fireboats correctly. We don't need a fireboat. We'll just use tugboats is just wrong. And I know this is a tirade of a video and, and, and a lot of people are going to hate this video. And that's fine. I, I understand. And I don't mean to be critical to the Navy. I love the Navy. My wife was in the Navy. I met my wife because of the Navy. I do my research largely based on the Navy. I, I again, I heartily give my respect to everybody who fought this fire. I, I mean, it's a rough fire. I mean, no one has fought a fire like this in recent memory. They really haven't. And I don't mean to diminish the crews that went in there and, and, and tried to get a handle on this. You were let down by a batch of people who were identified in this report. There were like 36 people identified in the report uh, who have a responsibility for what happened. And again, that's great, but what are you doing against them? Again, court-martialing an E-1 who failed out of BUDS, the Navy SEAL training, and now is disgruntled and set fire is great. That's good. If he's, he's an arsonist, to jail with him, go ahead. But there's a lot more that happened on this fire than that kid setting a fire, if that's what happened. So, sorry, I just had to let this out. It's cathartic. You need to do it at times. If you like the video, and no one liked this video, I know that, but please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos. As they come out, leave a comment. Oh my God, I'm going to get comments. I just, I know I'm going to get comments, but that's fine. Give it a thumbs up or probably not. Who knows? And everything. Share it across social media. I have a feeling it'll get shared across social media. And if you can, contribute to the Patreon page. It allows me to do analysis and videos like this going forward. So until our next video or until I'm found dead in a ditch, killed by Navy firefighters somewhere, this is Sal signing off.